Hey everyone, Brian Wilson here. Um, it's recently come to my attention that it would be helpful to have a, um, a little overview of how to manage prospects from a business development perspective or a sales perspective inside of Excelair. Um, as you probably already know, we have different sections inside the software for both contacts and for candidates. Um, and contacts is typically where sales and business development people spend more time um, compared to candidates. You know, the recruiting team spends more time working with candidates and, and jobs directly. So let's focus on that. Um, I'm going to start by clicking on my active view. This is just going to bring me to every contact in the database that has not specifically been archived, right? You can archive contacts anytime you want just by double clicking and opening them and then selecting archive. This just means it's going to take that, um, that contact out of your active view and, and out of those active uh, searches you might be doing or things like that, but not delete the contact completely because you might want to retain that contact history, right? So let's start with active. And then you'll notice um, inside of active, you know, you'll have your own fields and columns here. What I like to do is when, I'm, when I bring in a contact, a brand new contact from somewhere, let's just say um, this is going to be a, I'm just going to click new to add a new contact. And let's just say that this is a, uh, a person that works for my client, uh, 28 Consulting, right? And this client's name is uh, Sally Jones. And I'll fill in a few details about her. You know, she's the sales manager uh, with this company, and here's her email address, right? Um, so I'm not going to fill in all the fields, but you get the idea. This is where I would track some key details about this particular contact if I was a recruiting business development type person. So first off, what's her status? Is she a suspect? Is she a prospect? You know, have I qualified that lead? These statuses um, can be customized if you're on the premium version of our software. So if you have your own process, let us know and we can customize that. But let's just say that she's currently a suspect. So now I've tagged her as a suspect inside the status, right? And I can also enter any other details I want to about this particular person. Um, maybe if I get on the phone with her and she's not ready to sign a fee agreement or an engagement contract, I, she might, but she say, you know, I am looking for people with specific skill sets. You know, contact me if you find anybody that has, you know, that's a sales engineer, has Java, Enterprise, and um, maybe software as a service, you know, sales experience, right? So this way, when you get a candidate later, you might be able to market this candidate to this client should you want to. But the most important thing being this person has been tagged as a suspect. So now when I save this contact, uh, she's been added to my database as a suspect. So every time you add a contact, if you give them a status, you're going to be able to quickly pull up lists of people um, with that status just by typing in the status column. Right. So in the status column, I'm going to do a search for everybody that's a suspect, S-U-S-B-E-C-T, and there's every contact I'm working with right now that has a status of suspect. And just like you probably already use, you could narrow this down by people in a specific state, right? Show me just my suspects in Texas, right? So there's my two suspects I'm working with in Texas right now. Um, so, you know, now that you've, you know, get, been given an overview of how to build lists of those contacts, you can do searches, you know, show me just my suspects, show me just my prospects. These are your running lists. And, and as you start to convert clients, change them from a prospect to a suspect to a, an active client, for example. Or maybe this person told you not to call them ever again. Change them to do not contact. Or maybe I'm at a negotiating stage. Um, et cetera. It's up to you, you know, and again, you could customize these statuses to match your sales process, but once they convert into an active client, you can change their status to active client, and this way you can come back later and say, okay, I'm going to pull up a list of all of my active clients in the database, or just like you did your suspects or your prospects. Now, um, managing call lists and stuff would be the next step in this. So if I was to pull up a list of all my suspects and prospects, I'm just going to click here and then say, show me just my prospects and suspects. It's going to narrow that down. And then if I wanted to um, schedule a call for these people, add them to my call list, I would simply highlight one or multiple people. Let's just say I'm going to want to call my people in New York. So I'm going to narrow this down, just my, my people in New York. And then maybe um, I want to call just the... VPs of sales tomorrow. I'm going to highlight those two contacts and say schedule task. And then I'm going to choose what type of task this is by choosing a subtype. So these subtypes are all customizable, um, but I would encourage you to use them so you can track what types of calls you're trying to make. Let's just say that this is going to be a client outreach call. But again, you can make your own and track those. I'm just going to give myself a reminder. Um, you know, 
client outreach, um, try to get fee agreement or whatever, right? You'll use this for your own purposes. And then I'm going to add them to my call list for tomorrow by choosing the 12th. All I have to do now is hit save. It's going to add both contacts to my list. If you had selected a list of 50 people, it would add all 50 people to your list, right? Uh, and hit save. And so now those two people have been added to my call list for the 12th. So when you first log in in the morning, um, all of your suspects or prospects or any other types of contacts with activities associated with them are going to show up here on your My Daily Call List view. So I'm just going to open this in a new tab, and you're going to see it's pulled up a list of all of my contacts that I have calls scheduled with for today or that I haven't completed in the past. I'm just going to hide the navigation pane. So you can see here it's listing the name of the contact. It also has their company name. It has their phone numbers. Um, it tells me what type of task it is. Is it a task or a call? What's the subtype? So this is where I could narrow down by those subtypes. Show me just my client out outreach calls, right? I've narrowed it down just to client outreach calls. Or go back to square one, you know, show me just my uh, FAF, which is follow up on fee agreement calls, right? And so using the call list like this, it's easy to kind of quickly go through your calls. And the way that I would do it is as I'm going through my call list, I'll click on my first call here, uh, Jim Thompson, or let's sort this by the oldest calls first. So when I click on my contact Helen Little and I click on the activities tab, I'm going to see all of the activities I have scheduled with that particular contact, right? So all I need to do is open up, the, and there's my notes about the, con, about the task. If I open this task, I can just type some notes um, called and LVM, try again tomorrow, right? And what I'm going to do is click Auto Follow-Up one day and then Complete. What I've done here with this Auto Follow-Up is, is told the system that I want to automatically get reminded to follow up with this contact again one day from now. You could also change this to two days or three weeks or two months or a year or whatever. You get the idea, depending on that follow-up schedule you want to set, you're going to set that Auto Follow-Up. And then once I hit Save, let's just do this for three days to be fun. Um, once I hit Save, it's now removed that contact from, um, or it's completed that activity, and this contact's no longer going to be in my call list if I refresh that view, right? Um, let me just refresh that view, and you'll see Helen is no longer in that list. So as you go through and complete these calls, this call list is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. And again, you'll only see people in this list that you have calls scheduled with for today, tomorrow, or that you haven't completed in the past. So anything more than a day in the future is not going to show up on this list. Right. Hopefully that gives you a good overview um, using the combination of being able to schedule tasks, add um, statuses, and right from this call list view, you can also open up contacts and change their statuses right from here. Um, that combined with the, the auto follow-ups is a really nice way of managing your call list, managing your status of the people you're reaching out to in an efficient way. And remember, as you're going through these lists, wherever you see hyperlinks, you can jump to those hyperlinks. So if I wanted to open up Abacus Group, the company, I could just hold my control key down, press this button. It's going to open up their, their, uh, their profile here, and I could put in different things about the company if I want to as well. Or if you're working with one of the many phone systems that we work with, just click this link to dial out uh, through your phone system. We support most VOIP or click-to-call cloud-based phone systems. Or just send an email, just click this email to send an email to this particular prospect or suspect, right? Or maybe I want to narrow this list down, show me just all my client outreach calls, and I want to send a bulk email to this list. Now that I've narrowed it down to seven clients, I could just say send mail merge, and then I can initiate a quick email. Um, hi, first name, I'll be calling you today to discuss our services. Let me know if there's a good time that works specifically, right? So um, our call today. So you'll send a bulk mail, a personalized email to everybody on this list. You've just contacted all seven people um, as efficiently as it would take to, to contact one person. So hopefully, again, this shows you a good overview of how to work with lists, how to work with suspects and prospects. Um, feel free to send us an email at support at cbizsoft.com if you need any assistance um, with this at all. And uh, happy hunting. Thanks so much.